Uh, we are now recording. Okay, perfect. Okay, so I am going to call to order. Um, oh, and I have the wrong, hang on. I am going to call something to order here. Um, let's see. Okay. Uh, why is this show? Okay. Oh, interesting. It keeps pulling up the wrong agenda for me. Maybe I forgot to switch the um, yeah, the date. I forgot to switch it, I guess. Okay. I'm calling to order the September 28th meeting of the Governance Organization and Legislation Committee. Pursuant to Chapter 20 of the Acts of 2021, this meeting will be conducted via remote means. Members of the public are able to access the meeting in real time via Zoom or by telephone. I'm just noticing that um, the date on at least the SharePoint version, Athena, of the agenda still says September 14th. Oops. Um, it's, no, it, it was my, my, my fault. <laughs> um, but here we are. At least it's the right agenda on there. So I'm just going to do a quick sound check, make sure everyone can hear and be heard. And um, Anna, welcome. Morning. Morning. Uh, Nika? Good morning. I'm here. Great. Amy? I am here. Excellent. Thank you. Mandy? Present. And Jennifer? Present. Okay. And I, Athena, I think you can hear us, right? I Yes, I can. Thank you. Okay, perfect. Um, so we're, we're going to do just a quick review of the agenda, and then we have our guests, Amy and Anna here, to join us um, with respect to the water regulations. So we'll jump right into that. Um, so we're going to start with the water regulations, and then we'll move on to the three items concerning appointments. And so, Anna, did you have some, uh, I, I meant to ask you this, did you have some feedback on the appointments part as well or were you part of that process in some way I, I i have a faint memory about the rubric or something i have lots of thoughts and feelings um okay. but i don't have anything official uh, okay no i just i i'm happy to share from my own professional uh this overlaps with what i do professionally and so i'm happy to support okay. in any way i can Okay, so maybe we'll just after we finish with the water bylaw, sure. we'll move in, or to the regulations, we'll move into that. So I'm going to hand it over to either Amy or you, Anna, to um, give us an overview of the process that TSO went through and what, you know, what's happening with the water regulations. Sure, Amy, do you want me to start and then you can jump in or do you wanna, okay. So uh, TSO has been tasked with reviewing both the water and sewer regulations and bylaws. Um, and I wanna note that somehow Athena and I had a chat yesterday um, where we were both like, oh crap, we completely just didn't do the bylaws. So um, that's that's a drop on our end, be it, it was not in the same document. And so I think we just got so focused on the details of the regulations. So I apologize that I know your agenda says bylaw and regulations. We have a new timeline. You will see the bylaw. The bylaw itself is really simple and straightforward. So that'll be a quick one for you. But today we're gonna to talk about the regulations, which are, um, this is not a, a judgment on the regulations, but they are not simple nor necessarily super straightforward because there's a lot of quite literal moving parts to this. Um, so what our process uh, was, just, I'm sorry yeah. to pause you. I just, oh see yeah, Guilford's here. Guilford has joined us. So, uh, just wanting to make sure that Guilford can hear us and be heard. Yes. Okay. Welcome Guilford. Thanks for joining us. Go on, Anna. Thank you. Uh, Guilford, they're letting me, they're letting me try to explain water regs, which was, um, which is very exciting for you and Amy, I'm sure to hear me mess this up, but our process is, I do know that. So, as you all know, the, the regs came to the council. They have not been updated since, gosh, with the 70s. Is that right? Since uh, before I was born. And so um, we are uh, we are taking a really good look. And basically, Amy has rewritten these. Um, and it's been, I just want to do a public commendation of all of Amy and Guilford's work. But um, Guilford, this is no shade on you, especially Amy, because this is very much her arena. And uh, Truly, she was. I'm so grateful for how much uh, time and effort and energy you put into completely redoing these. So thank you. The regs came from council with lots of comments um, and questions from uh, folks on finance, folks on council, 
And uh, we've com we combined all the comments we kind of went through. And what we did was we looked at all of the nitty gritty sort of detailed comments, we meaning I combined them and then Amy had to deal with all of them. But um, we also, what we also did was talk about sort of the big thematic changes. And there's one really big thing. And I know GOL is dealing with more of the um, clarity, consistency, actionability, but I wanna just talk through the big, the big content shift that we, the biggest content shift that we made. So prior to these, the new version, um, the homeowner was, in, was responsible for the water line from the main to their, into their home. Um, and so we all have seen emails about this. We've seen some concerns about things that happen, for example, under a public roadway where the homeowner is responsible. And so what TSO did, and I, I want to like, this is a really specific area of nerd that I didn't know I had, but what TSO did was we got into this and, and had a really good discussion with Guilford and Amy about what it would take to shift some of that responsibility to a place where the owner is responsible for the things that they can control. So we're saying the new regulations have adjusted it so that the property owner is responsible for the water line from, and this is, there's some caveats to this, but is responsible for the water line from their property line into their home. The town takes jurisdiction and responsibility when it crosses onto town property. So that's, it seems really simple, right? So town is responsible for water lines under town property. Property owners are responsible for water lines under their property. Um, and so that's the, that's the biggest shift that we made. And we were, we were, I know that this is a big adjustment for our town staff um, to now take responsibility for more of the lines. And so Amy Guilford and I kind of talked through what, what it would mean and how to present it and how to move that forward. And it feels from my perspective, and I don't want to speak for Amy or Guilford, like we came to a really solid resolution on how to make this equitable and fair while also not uh, throwing everyone into total turmoil. I know that this is still a little stressful for, or maybe a lot stressful for our town staff, but um, I appreciate the, the willingness to work through. That's the biggest shift in these regs. Um, there's a couple other things that you'll notice as we go, but um, I, I wanted to just name that because it kind of gets a little bit lost if you're just reading through it like policy, but there is this bigger, um, in my mind, bigger kind of, ethical shift that we've made that I'm, I'm very, very pleased with and I think is important for us. Um, I don't know if Amy or Guilford have anything to add. Oh, and so process-wise, just so folks know, um, we have finished the water regs, the sewer. Um, this is where I've learned so much. And I know it, like it's like one one hundredth of what Amy and Guilford know, but water is um, pressure driven, whereas sewer is gravity driven. And so you're getting water now. I know I did it. Um, I, <laughs> I, uh, you're getting water now because it will be slightly different than sewer. And so we wanted to just start this moving. Um, I think originally the plan was to just get you everything at once, but um, there's going to be some slight changes between the two, just based on logistics of how things move. Um, and so we will be getting you sewer a little bit down the line. However, it's going to look very, very similar um, in terms of the, the major shifts. So when you do, I guess my, my reason for saying that is one of the things we were striving for was consistency. And I know you're looking for consistency and I'll ask that, you know, when we get to sewer, you kind of keep that in mind of consistency between the two. Yeah. Um, before I answered Jennifer's question, sorry, I'm sorry, Michelle, this is your meeting. I'm, I apologize. No, 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 you're fine. No. I was just going to ask if Amy or Guilford, if I missed anything big that they wanted to share. No, I think that's great. Okay. So Jennifer, please. No, I did. I wanted to get that quote. Sewer is gravity driven and water is pressure driven. Pressure driven. Pressure driven. Okay. And the other thing I just wanted to thank TSO and Amy and Guilford, because I think this is just a great example of government working and being responsive. You know, we got all these emails and then, you know, really zoomed into action. And it, I think this is a great resolution too. So I just wanna, you know, sometimes even in Amherst things move quickly. And I think this was a very- I um, mean, sort of quickly, Jennifer, we were redoing something from the seventies, but yes. But I do yes, think, no, I, but from I when agree, those I emails agree. started coming in that at least this council got alerted to some of the concerns, I think, you know, it really, it feels like everyone just snapped into action and came up with a really great response. So thank you. Yeah, Amy and I were talking about that this morning about how it, it's, I'm sorry, Amy, you were gonna say. No, all I was gonna say is, uh, you know, the last part of all of this action is, you know, we made a decision 
that the town's going to take responsibility. And there is finance, there's a financial piece to that. I and I feel like that question is still lingering. Um, it is. And I know that's not your purview, but I, I'll never hesitate to say, let's be conscious of the financial impact of a decision. Yes, that's no, I know. Made here. It is our purview, but yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> well, it's, okay. and it's, I think Amy meant it's not like GOLs. It's like finance gets to, yeah, to mess with that. Exactly. But yeah, it will, this will have yeah, this will have financial implications. And I think that when, when we had thought about it on that very minimal level at TSO, knowing that we are not the finance committee and Anika, please also feel free to jump in. If I miss something, you know, we decided that it, the benefits outweighed the costs in this, in this instance, um, because of, you know, I mean, I think the water regs were in the works before we started getting those emails, but what those emails did was alert us as counselors to how to, how, another way to think about this. Um, and, it got us you, to, you, to a place. and you have a rationale for it, which is very, mm -hmm cogent that what the homeowner can control. Right. So that makes sense. Right. So yeah. thank you. I think that's about it from my end. I don't know if Amy or Guilford or um, Anika have anything that they want to jump in on. I do not. I just, um, you know, I want to join in thanking you. I was away for much of the um, the work and the, the weeds that went into this. So thank you all so much. All right. So just, um, I just wanted to ask a clarifying question in terms of process. So yeah. um, this has come to us, just the regulations, we're going to get the bylaws soon. Um, does this then have to go to finance committee still, or is this going to go back to the council and then to be referred to the finance committee? I, I thought it was referred to all three of us. Okay. So I, I, I guess usually our, we're sort of the last stop. So I was just wondering what the order difference was here. And, and I see Mandy. Mandy. Oh, sorry. Yeah, I was going to say, does Mandy know the answer? <laughs> Please. So Maybe I it would wasn't surmise, and it's one of the questions I have that, um, you know, finance would recommend this change or not, but if it recommends this change, um, it would come through with a recommended water rate change, um, which wouldn't affect the clarity, consistency, or actionability. So it probably yeah. doesn't matter which order we do it in. Um, okay. But that was one of my questions was, do we need to change the rates? And if because of this ownership change, and if so, should they happen at the same time, such that our vote should be to recommend only when a new rate is calculated and ready to be voted on? Uh, can I, yeah, I, and I, I could be wrong because you guys know the whole process better, but in terms of any reference to cost and rates and all that, we were really careful to put that all in Appendix A. And so I think there might even be a way to craft language to just say, like, we agree with everything pending, you know, any changes that might have to be made in Appendix A. And we did that just because the water rates are referenced and even some of the fines. And we knew that. Yeah. People aren't going to want to go through and find all those rates every single year if we update things. So we have it all consolidated in one place and everywhere in the regs references that. So um, I guess I'm hopeful that that means that we can work around that. Well, I guess my question, though, with that is I, I have a couple questions related to Appendix A, but um, the regulations once adopted become in effect. If we don't change the water rate at the same time, we could be in a having a problem. And right. so is the recommendation from your department, Amy and Guilford, um, to make sure that there is a new rate adopted simultaneously with the adoption of the new regulations? That would be my recommendation if no, and nobody's asking me, but I, I mean, I do, I think that it makes sense for, they do have to go into effect at the same time. We also have talked about um, having the go, having these regulations go into effect upon the passage of the bylaw, because that's coming after. And basically the bylaw is just saying that we, as the council, as water and sewer commissioners maintain our ability to change this, um, instead of having the, the town manager have full, um, authority on it. But, um, I think that yes, Mandy. And I guess then the question becomes, do we make, and, and I believe, I know this is on finances radar. Um, but I, I would just want to say like, I guess, yeah, we can't bring it back to the council until finance has established new rates. Um, and maybe you're saying we can't craft a motion or we can craft a motion that says, you know, uh, goes into effect upon adoption of water rates for a fiscal year. No, GOL can certainly craft a motion when we make a recommendation to that or declare that they're clear, consistent and actionable. They yeah. can 
that motion can include things like, but we recommend adoption effective these right current with these two things <laughs> type thing. Right. Yeah, because and I'm not actually even sure that I would I would say that the rates are the clear, consistent, or actionable component of this. Um, short, I guess you could say actionable, but um, without an analysis by finance committee, I don't know that we can say that. And um, just to that point, Anna, do you, so you said you think this is on, so I'm on the finance committee and I was trying it's to- It's on Andy's radar, sorry. On Andy's radar, okay. So like we have a meeting on next Tuesday on the 4th. I'm, I'm not sure whether it's on the agenda yet or not. And, and maybe it's not know more, but um, just timing wise, it sounds like we can do what we are here to do and we'll put whatever disclosures into the motion that we need to. Um, and then it will be referred over or it's already been referred, but we'll let the finance committee know that we I believe so. Okay. And then it has to come back to the full council as well. And so I think that, you know, yeah. Yeah. Okay, great. All right. Um, so would you three, uh, are you going to be staying for the review itself? Um, I, I'm happy to, in case we can answer, or in case I can answer any questions. I don't know sure. if Gilford or Amy. Yeah, I was planning. Offer. Okay. <laughs> Partly also because I've never been to a GOL meeting. So I just am curious what the, pro <laughs> what your guys' process is to learn. It's very exciting. You're, you're in for you're about to find <laughs> Um, Guilford, please. <laughs> um, yes, I am staying, but I would not tie it to setting rates. Um, not saying you're going to accept this with what um, with the new rates because we only set rates at certain times. Um, so we're nowhere near ready to set new rates. So we'd be if you do to just be accepting the current rates, which I think the current rates are all in there already. So. There's no real need to, um, and I don't think the finance committee is going to actually <clears throat> give us a rate increase just because we accept this right now. So if you, it might be easier to say it goes into effect on the start of a cal calendar year or a fiscal year. Okay, Mandy, did you, yeah, please. I know we tend to do the rates in the spring. Um, do they go into effect immediately or are they always based on a fiscal year? They always go into effect July 1. Okay. Unless, unless there's a crisis, but usually it's July 1. Okay. Um, Mandy or Jennifer or Anika, do you have any more questions before we move into the review? No, thanks. Okay. Well, go ahead. Depends on what you mean by questions. <laughs> I mean, I have questions, but well, will they be? Could could they happen as we're reviewing this? Yes. Okay, yeah. perfect. So, um, are you in a position, Mandy, to bring bring stuff up? It will have some of my edits on it, but sure, they're minor. Okay, and I think there was a there was a marked up copy and a clean copy in the packet. So this is the clean. Okay. With my markups. Okay. Mm -hmm. So Anna, maybe you you have the uh, marked up one just in case there's a question that comes yep. up or whatever. Okay. I've got Perfect. it. Yeah. Um. So I'm gonna be very honest here that I have not um in this role as a chair of GOL um, reviewed a document like this yet. So I assume um, we'll go through and look at it. And Mandy um, has already made some suggestions. So we'll look at those. Uh, but it, are there any particular, um, Mandy, since you've been on this committee before, anything that you would add about how we should review this differently? Uh it's easiest to generally sort of go section by section instead of page by page or page by page instead of like line by line, anything on this page, anything on this page, it moves quicker that way. Okay, perfect. Okay. So I'll look for hands and we'll just move through in that way. And just please go ahead and raise your hand if you'd like to ask a question or add any information as we move through this. So my first one's basic and I don't know whether it happens. I'd love to have appendix A be on page one so that the table of contents is only on one page. Yeah, that's doable. Um, I, I actually did it after and then I was like, I don't actually know that I can make formatting changes that we didn't officially vote on. So that is, uh, <laughs> yes, it's doable. 
I'm going to open the Word doc actually so that I can. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. If you could take. Yeah, I had the PDF. Let me get the. Right. Yeah, I've got the Word doc up so I can do any changes on this. It's just where mine are. I, I deleted a line. It might do it, but because I'm track changes, it won't show it till I show the, the line. If you delete the line above water use regulations, it does do it. <laughs> yeah, and that's what I've done. Um, so. Yep, yep. It, so that should when be. When I remove the view of all markup, it should show. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> All right. Anything Any, else for yeah. table of contents? Nope. nope. I'm going to try and get one page on at a time. Great. Thank you, Mandy. And Mandy, since you've already looked at these and you have some suggestions as we go, just as you, you know, just, just call them out and Well, they'll be marked on the side, but okay. not all of them are. Um, so general ones, which I didn't get to doing. Um, do we, in bylaws, we tend to capitalize all of defined terms. Um, this yeah. this regulation set is, I don't know whether it's 50-50, it's, it's sort of half and half or sometimes some not. So I think we should decide which way we're going with that and then just do a find and replace. I think we should capitalize everything and I agree. That's my hot take. Are you talking about like, and, and like, what are you talking about? What so the word Amherst construction standards mm -hmm. is a defined term. So anytime it shows up in the regulations, are we going to capitalize it yes. or not? And it's sort of a 50, 50 right now. I see. Um, I, I, I that. Yeah, that's a good call. So that's just a search and replace, which I can do afterward. And so, okay, wait. After. Yeah, that was my question, Mandy. Would you rather that I be making the changes that you're talking about afterwards, or would you like to do that? So, if we do it right on the screen, I can then send you stuff and then say, this is the stuff I didn't get to if you want. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that'd be, that'd be great. I just wasn't sure if I should be like taking notes as we go to make sure I got it. But that sounds, that sounds good. And then my other one was Oxford commas. Yes, <sighs> that's mine too. <laughs> so my confession is that I love an Oxford comma um, and would like to put them in everywhere. However, I will defer. I mean, like here, yeah, no, I, I, to me, it seems like it should, it should be there, but I don't know if, um, Amy, do you have a different thought about that? <laughs> I mean, I'm an engineer. I barely know how to write. So I will refer to your knowledge on that. I probably have been pretty inconsistent throughout because I throw it in when I think I need it. So okay. Mandy, I can go through and add in Oxford commas. Okay. If that's okay with you. No, that's fine. Yeah, I think that would be great. Yeah. And also like, is this, for example, this year, the applicability purpose and policy, is that a need to be like, so that's capitalized, so, but is that consistent? So I looked back at our regs, um, at our other regs, and I did this after, sorry, I need to write down add Oxford comma so I don't forget to do it. Um, so I looked back at our other regs because I was doing, I was looking at this yesterday and I was frustrated by the spacing, um, which I really wanted like to fix. And that was when I had my moment of like, am I allowed to fix this if TSO didn't vote on me to delete that space? Um, there's also, if you'll notice, like a couple font differences. So with GOL's permission, I would like to reformat this. Um, the issue is that, Michelle, to answer your actual question, there isn't a lot of consistency with how different regulations are written, because I went back and looked at a couple different ones to try to figure it out. Um, this is not a top priority, but at some point it might be nice to kind of create a little council style guide um, on how we want to write things because they're not consistent. Um, and, and throughout this document, I know they're not consistent either, but that's uh, in some places it's bolded, in some places it, <laughs> it's underlined. Uh, I think it's if you all want to decide that. Okay, I can, sure. I, can go through I, see, I see your hand is up. Yeah, well, and I, I'm just going to say that as you guys the applicability purpose and policy and that capital A or not. If you look at the table of contents, I have it as a lowercase a. And if you look in here, it's an uppercase a. So decide which one you want, but then Make it's going to have to be fixed in both places. <laughs> I got yeah. that. No worries. <laughs> That's our job. I was shooting for the middle. One of them's right. <laughs> Smart. 
Um, does anyone have a preference on that on the committee, whether that that A should be capitalized or not? Anika, I saw you on. No, mute. I, I do not. My hand was I didn't. My hand was up. You said. No, I just saw you on mute, so I. I <laughs> oh no 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 no! I okay. I agree. Either a capital or or you know big or little A, but um. You're talking about the A lowercase. and and. Yeah, should be lowercase. I think it should be lowercase. Yeah, I agree. Okay. All right, so then it has to be through, then we'll do that throughout. Okay. Anything else on this page? I'm just quickly just, I mean, I think a lot of like the formatting stuff will get taken care of when, when Anna goes through and, and does yeah, that. Do oh, thank yeah. you. It definitely has my authority, my my permission if, to do that. <laughs> I'm sorry. Thank I don't you. Have to. Thank I'm you. the one that's normally yeah. doing it. That's I can awesome. wrestle with it. I got it. Okay, I'm moving on to the next page. Go for it, yep. Uh, this change here was yeah. an addition of a paragraph because it just, the the paragraph thing as built just continued on here. So sure. and I'll see it in the packet version. Yeah, I'm looking, okay. And then down here in cross connection, there was a comma between 310 and CMR. So it just needs, I, I deleted the comma and added a space. Yep just lingering things. I'm good yeah. here if you want, once you're yeah. happy, where everyone else is. Same. Andy, I swear, if you have a comment about lawn irrigation systems, we talked about these for no. hours. <laughs> and permanent didn't have a space between them. Oh, thank God. Okay. Oh, that, oh, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. It was that was a track changes error, I think. Yeah, the, a lot of these are things like that, right? Where you don't realize yeah, yeah, that, yeah, that yeah. happened. Mandy, can you scroll up? I think I saw something odd. Um, Valved. Let me use to turn. Mm -hmm. Oh, I'm sorry. Never mind. Okay, so the turn on and sh or shut off. Those are. Or those like those are definitions, I believe. Definitions. Those are definitions. Okay. Okay. Perfect. Shut off. Is there? Oh, turn. Amy on is valved a word? It is in our world. <laughs> and great, that's perfect. It makes turn sense on to me as a word. Does not have a definition, though. Right. All right. Turn on. Oh, shut off does. Okay. Shut so, do we does. need a definition for turn on, or do we? Um... Amy. Yeah. I mean, we can if you want. I think shut off has a little more of a definition just because there are certain ta like tasks and, you know, collector's office things that happen with shutting mm -hmm. off where turn on. I think it's pretty self-explanatory, but. That makes sense. Okay. So that's, that works just to do what, what Mandy just did Great. with the lowercase. Yeah. So that's fine. This is page six, more definitions. Mm -hmm. And page seven. Mm -hmm. So on seven, the highlights. I don't know why those are highlighted. Okay. Um, and I had fixed it in my version and then I got nervous that I had screwed something up. And so I sent you the version that still had the highlights, um, but they should, it should not be. That's my, Amy, do you feel differently? No, that's fine. I think things were, I was highlighting things when I was going through and was like, here's a conversation I need to have with Guilford. And so okay. again, with the track changes, it's possible it's that I just- so confusing. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, Mandy, there, there's a couple more of those, I think. Yeah. I'll, I'll unhighlight them when we get to them. Sorry about that. Thank you. No, you're fine. This is a beast of a document. I am grateful that you all are catching the things because we've been staring at it. I've been staring at it for a long time. I know Amy and Guilford have been staring at it for longer. Yep. Yeah. <clears throat> I'll move on to this page. Sorry. This is where I, I uh, got. Sorry, Mandy, would you just oh, scroll yeah. back a, a bit? Number, I'm looking at number four real quick. The, the comma there is just, is it needed or? It's not. After, okay. Okay. So this comment is where I realized that not all the defined things were yeah. done.
So I got I'll that. go okay. through and do the search and replace. Okay. And a lot of fun formatting. There's a bold A there, which I know. <laughs> why I, I the, know the B doesn't line up. I we'll yeah. get this. We'll All figure right. it out. I'll I'm taking no, care of the formatting. <laughs> I'm gonna oh, fight with Microsoft you. Word. I'm gonna do it. <laughs> I'm determined. Honestly, I'm just mostly mad. And that a, it wasn't a should have a, a a comma after stop. No. Yes, it should for Oxford commas. Yeah. If we're if we're adopting yeah. the principle. Yes. And I think there's a bunch of them in this case. There are, um, you'll see me adding some of them when I went through quickly and others okay. not. Like I added you one can. down here and down here. Yeah, um, at this point, I, if you wanna call them out, you're welcome to, but I'll go back through it and add on okay. Oxford commas. Okay, anything else? And then this is where I started capitalizing mm -hmm. terms and then gave up about three pages later. <laughs> Hilarious. I, I mean, the like, good I thing is now I know this for the sewer right regs. Exactly. Yeah, we'll get Maybe. this for That's, sewer. So the sewer yeah. regs are going to be smooth, smoother sailing. <laughs> so the, the I think Michelle's going to say this comma is probably not needed. I don't think it is. Where are you? Oh, okay. 4B on page nine. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Is it, are these your changes on D, Mandy? Yes, that's so just capitalizing to find yeah. terms. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It'll stop in another two pages. <laughs> <laughs> when I was like, it'll be easier to do a search and replace to do this. Yeah. Okay. Jennifer, you're muted. I'm, I'm sorry, we ran into something on another committee you because you didn't make these in the file we're doing these for the first time like if you had made any changes to the file that would have been an open meeting law violation yeah like if i had if if i had like because it came up right yeah yeah if there was like a collaborative effort going on in a file that would have yeah. been a violation but i'm not in the same file in the same file as maybe yeah we're doing this so this is being done for the and, first and we're time animating meeting, yeah right? Mm -hmm. And we've agreed on some of these, so we don't have to do it now. It's just going to be part of the vote. Right. Yep. And I'll we'll do it. Give yeah. authority. <laughs> yeah. Hey. <I'm> sure <laughs> yeah. Can I move on to page yeah. 10? Yep. More capitalization. Yep. Easy. And Oxford commas. Okay. And also just looking on it when you go through and taking out commas that aren't needed. So I'll try. I'm a comma yeah. fiend. So uh, okay. I, but I will do like, my I best. Think, I think I saw one up if you if you climb up a little bit um, uh, to D here. Let me just did I um, any violation of the government and where appropriate at the bottom oh, and the utility me take, you know, that one works um, okay. where and yeah that yeah and, and the first and yeah that's yeah that's this one. Where, yeah yep. that one the other one can stay yep that's good page i think we're on 11 yep okay more oxford commas from me oh okay. down here's a non-oxford comma b meters greater than two inches right Yes. Correct. Just wanted to make sure. Mm -hmm. Not two inch. <laughs> we call them two inch meters. And so oh. that, that's my slang, not being it's grammatically the industry correct. term. It's the industry term. So you're right. Okay. All right. Uh, so as of the approval of these regulations, comma, the utility will provide, I don't think we need that comma. I think it works because it's a phrase. I think it works. As yeah. of the approval date of the regulation, the utility will provide. Okay. I mean, you might actually not even need that phrase. I don't know that that's in your purview, but obviously these regs don't go into place until the regs are in place. And that's hmm. when this is. It could just say the utility will provide all service. Basically. Yeah. Yeah. Right. I mean, yeah, sense. that makes sense. Good catch.
Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Next page, page 12. Mm -hmm. An extra space on 2A. Thank you. Couple of commas are the rest of mine. Well, do they, is location underlined because they like a comma before the which? They want a comma after location. Right. Yeah. Usually when you put which, they want a comma before it instead of that. If you said in a location that maybe safely, I don't think it would want a comma. Mm. I like the that better than the which. Yeah, try that and see if it, I, I always like that better than what yeah, I do too. I, I, Wait, well, okay. Go ahead. I'll read with that. It weirds right. it, it weirds read to me, but I'm not, this is not my committee. It weirds read? <laughs> it weirds read. That's where I'm at today. Yep. <laughs> I left my coffee sure, downstairs I heard and that. it's killing me. Yep. Um, no, you heard correctly. Quickly on the what are the what's the light brown under like period of time, period of They're time. Gonna, I, I think that's because they want you to make it shorter as in and in is in instead of is located in if a meter is in an inaccessible area right like that located is not needed um but that's grammatically but do you feel amy that that gives more clarity to the the language i mean i think so okay <laughs> Um, what about the period of time? What is it asking um, us to do there? Probably the same thing, just period. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I think that I would take out the of time unless that's someone feels strongly about that. Where is the of time? So up so, here, there's a will be charged triple the estimated water usage for the period of the current billing cycle that the meter was tampered. I like the of time in that. You do? It just seems clunky to me, but it, yeah, it, it's, I'm not gonna, it's fine. <laughs> period of time of the current billing cycle. I think usage for the period of the current billing cycle. I think that's fine as well. I, I agree. I also will tend to like overuse commas sometimes and chop out information, but I, I think in this case to be, you know, it's important to be extra clear, you know, for someone reading it. So we're not um, leaving any room for confusion. So Anika, are you saying well, be to leave the of time? Um, and Amy, is that what you were suggesting to leave of time? Wouldn't it? What if I, I think I could go portions? either way on this particular one. Okay. Um, what if you said it for the portion of the current billing cycle? Yeah. Yeah. I think, I think that one reads well either way. So if you want to take those out, that's, I'm okay with that. Okay. I tend to be like a minimalist with that. So if I, you know, whether people might have a different, um, would it, but would it feel better to say estimated water usage usage for the portion of the current billing cycle that the meeting was meter was tampered with? Aren't you glad I'm not on your committee? No, so that the question sorry. is, <laughs> Well, that there's not very clear. Does that change the meaning by using portion versus period? Right. Oh, I thought there were this. I didn't think that, but yeah, that's fine. You just say time. Like a period is a cycle that is determined, yeah. whereas a portion isn't, at least as far as I understand. A portion it. is like a segment so, of the entire period. What yes, but isn't that what this is saying? Amy, was this the the charge tripled for that whole building cycle once it was tampered with that the building cycle during which it was tampered with the whole cycle gets triple or is it just from the date of tampering it's the period of time that it was tampered. well I'll, I'll say that it's a little bit of a moot point because if your meter's tampered with we can't get a reading and so what we're going to do is you know kind of take your previous quarter's usage and it's going to be estimated and then that's going to be tripled um, and that that's per mass general law. So our hands are tied on the tripling. Um, but it's, it's a little it's, bit of a moot point because if we can't get a reading, it's going to be on it based on an estimate. But, it'll but it's be an estimate of the cycle, not just like one month. You'll correct because we're okay. not going to know when it was tampered with. We just know we could get a reading last time and we can't this time because of tampering. 
Got it. Okay, then yes, I agree. Don't change it to portion. I misinterpreted that. All right. And that's um, the same for the unmetered lines that it's the whole cycle. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then of the meter, it has no standing water and temperatures above freezing at all times. What is it pointing out there? Does it want to? Always has no standing water. It doesn't always have to have no standing water. It just has to not have standing water when the people are coming to install. How did it even make that recommendation? That's so interesting. <laughs> I think it doesn't like the at all times at the end. And so it's it's saying that could be consolidated to always. Always, right, exactly. Is that a dangling participle or something? <laughs> but it would change the meaning of this sentence. Yeah, yeah. okay, good. All right. Uh, for the- gonna, This one, Yeah. they just put the word for. Mm-hmm. For this purpose, the owner shall provide valves located on either side of the meter for the purpose of shutting down. They're just saying for shutting down the water, sir. Shutting down the water, yeah. <clears throat> Is this, that's okay with you, Amy? I, 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 I mean, I, I'm sure grammatically that actually works. I think for the specificity, I like I don't think, yeah. You know, for this Keep specific purpose. Yeah, I, I don't want to change it. Clarifies it really well. I'm yeah. fine with that if every, yeah. Okay. Take that Microsoft Word. <laughs> Can't tell us what to do. 12. Thank you. Wait, you mean 13? Oh, 13. Okay. Yeah. So this one is supposed to be an of, not an or, right? Yeah, this is just one describing of. that, you know, you've got a meter and there's a couple different options for how we read it. And then it describes... The, the different types that we currently have. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Meters are equipped. So is, th is this saying that the meters only have one or the other, or is it saying- Correct. So meter one only the has one or the other. Oh, okay. Yeah. That's, okay, got it. <laughs> and should the note there be within the period or does that go, at, I never know how to do that properly. Or does that go after? Depends For on what style you're using. Period works inside. Yeah, that's, that's it's a separate sentence. So the way that it's is right now, I mean, I would have put the period after the, um, the note, but you're saying it's fine this way. It's, it's not. I mean, Michelle, you're saying, you say utilities reader and not have that period there and have that exactly. note within that period, not yeah. whether the period at the end of phased out is inside or outside. Correct. That, that's what you're asking. Yes, oh. that's what I'm asking. Yeah. Because it does it refer to that, the outside reader? It refers are... to the outside reader specifically. So I don't know how you guys, where you want that. Yeah, I think I think that you should just go with your gut here, because um, I don't think that it necessarily impacts the clarity, consistency, or actionability. Yeah, I would remove the period and put it after the after the note. Love Jennifer, that. you have some. Is that I know sometimes you've you've pointed out these kinds of things. Okay. No, I think, I'm good. Okay. That's what it would look like. Yeah. To me, like that one. more right, yeah. All right, great. Um, so we could get rid of in order on this one. Mm -hmm. I think that's good. Move on? Yeah. Yes. Well, there was one thing above, if we're really getting picky, where it said about installing, um, let's see, if the owner, the last, very last one on the page, if the owner private meters 
Do we need all those and shall be furnished, installed, comma, maintained and read by or is Maintained, yeah, that's. that's and I don't think we actually need the A on this one. Because there's only one sentence. Yeah. So I think we can get rid of the A. Oh, that's a fun, a fun little. <laughs> we haven't run into that yet. <laughs> I like that. Anna, did you say that you're going to consider like bolding the? I'm gonna, I'm gonna try to, yeah. That She'll will be things like it's... this will be indented beyond the A, B, yeah. and C. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, it's interesting yeah. how the fonts also can change. Like you I know they are, but they, you know, like this one and two is, you know. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> Well, I did we'll figure out how to fix that part yesterday. It was the little tab things that were driving me nuts. <laughs> yeah, the tab things are a pain. Yeah, hit under do, under seven, two. Does. They want it does when the That's result not... does not. Yeah. Yeah. As yeah. long as. If. Yeah, that's good. The cost of any else. Do we want to change that to if? I would, I think. I mean, I don't think we need as long as. Yeah. Personally. I agree. This is like, you know, have any of you become reliant on your GPS systems and then like, <laughs> they like take you somewhere like you know you can you can kind of rely on some of these edits that word gives us but you also have to use your own yeah you uh, do <laughs> you know, word doesn't stop. get nuance <laughs> <laughs> yeah <laughs> all right page 15 how many pages we have on this 28 that's why I'm moving mm. through quick <laughs> <laughs> okay wow this is a big one okay are readily oh, acceptable at all times um always are... readily accessible okay no i like it this way you like it this way anna <laughs> personally i do are readily accessible. Well, the only thing I would say in terms of consistency is that we've taken out the at all times in other places, right? So we didn't. We didn't end right, up taking um, it out. No, no, we kept it. We kept it in the last one. Okay. So then if we kept it, it it's fine, I would say. I thought for some reason I thought we because in the last one it changed the meaning of it. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. And then the defense of all the time that went into it, I think, um, you know, it's understood sometimes when you see the word shall, you are in for some long reading. <laughs> what was that, Anika, when you see what? And just, you know, kind of over, overall, I used to have a little <laughs> a blurb sent to me about this that was like some of, of the words that when you see them, like keywords, you know, you're in for long reading and pay attention and shall is one. Of yep. Them. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> this one I, down it does not leave room for error, which is great. The fees and expenses. All installation of devices require a permit. Installations require or installation requires. I would put the S on installation. That sounds right. Yeah. Yeah. Great. Seventeen. Okay. Seventeen. They want to change sufficient to enough. 
Mm. <laughs> I think sufficient's better. It seems more clear to me. Yeah. What's the, yeah, okay. It's Anna's love of commas there. I know, it's so bad. <laughs> My mom is like a, a literacy teacher and she can't stand me sometimes. 18. For other reasons. But, yeah. Looks like there's an extra space before the F laws, irrigation systems, lawn irrigation. Yeah, there is. Anna's going to take care of all of those. I got that. Yeah. Oh, okay. I got that. Yeah. <laughs> no worries. I got that part. Near. Uh, is near different than in close proximity? Is it, it's asking you to put near in there? Yeah. Yeah. Just I, near. Prefer in, I prefer in close proximity, just for some reason, it feels more specific to me. I, I know that that's perception, but. No, I, th I, I, I agree with that. I, I think it does feel more specific with in close mm -hmm. proximity. Yeah. Some of this is just like also the, the lingo of this type of thing, you know? Yeah. <laughs> so I think it's totally. important keep that voice in there because this thing will just bear it down to the bones if you let it, you know. Good. Where it says on um, maintenance of the fire hydrant, that just means you have to keep it accessible to the fire trucks and where we saw it. I don't know how you made which it. which one was um, that? Four. I mean that just means I'm just curious that you have to maintain access. You can't have yeah. pushes around it. Okay. Well, it's also, I mean, it's maintained like it's gotta be an operational order. But how order do you know, when you say hydrants, is that a fire hydrant? Yeah. On private property. So this so is if like you, if, a yeah. condo complex that might oh, have- Oh, I see. Okay. You yeah. know, they might have private water mains or even like Got UMass it. on campus has okay. private lines. Thank you. So they I was like thinking how does a homeowner, but you're talking about something order. else. Yeah. Okay. As well as accessible. Yeah. I'm just going to keep scrolling. Yeah. Yeah. How come it goes A, B, C, D, and then A? So so oh. these should be. Oh, in, right? In, yeah. Yeah, okay, <laughs> That's perfect. the formatting issue on it's going to take care of. <laughs> I'll try, okay. I'll try. Guilford, I see your hand is up. He just Sorry. accidentally hit it. Oh. I got too many <laughs> keyboards here. <laughs> <laughs> it's funny because you get bumped to the top of the, at least on my screen you do. So um, yeah. Okay, good. All right. I thought it was supposed to be an owner, not a owner. Yeah, I think you're right. It had a blue underline on it when I went through it the first time. Yeah. I think that was at some point customer and owner were used interchangeably. We mm -hmm. consolidated on owner. And so track changes, we fix that. And yeah. Yeah. And is owner a, a definition? Yes. So does it need so. an? Does it need the word an at all? <clears throat> I mean, you could say the owner may request. I think the owner is what we've been kind of consistently using before if you wanted to seek that level that consistency but not just owner may request correct we've been using the owner you can see it here yeah, yeah. the is not yeah like in that it's capitalist because it's the beginning of the sentence but typically right okay so i'm sorry yeah so you're saying throughout the document even though it's a um definition correct. you used the okay yes yeah, yeah.
And I didn't go through and check references like this. I assume Anna and Amy that they're correct. Always. I could highlight it for a further check. Yeah, let's let's double check because I don't know that I went through to double check every single one of those references after a couple of things got shuffled around. So that's a that's a great call that we should just confirm. Mm -hmm. I think this is the only one I saw throughout that was an actual reference. But if okay. I see others, I'll highlight them. Great. And I'm just deleting the ones where there's only one paragraph. Anything? I'm not seeing anything right now, no. There's a double as there in B, right there. That's why that's, yeah. There we go. Amy, are you getting into this? <laughs> oh, this is, this is thrilling. <laughs> is customer a defined term anymore? <laughs> customer okay. is, a def I believe it's a defined term. We can, we can double check, but. Yes. That was, yeah, we made a full pass at all of it, but tr very clearly tried to, you know, customer is basically the person who signed up, like, signed like up. they pay the bill, but the owner yeah. is a person who owns the property. They're not always one in the same. So we tried to be clear on responsibilities of things. And a lot of times they are one in the same, but there are places where they aren't. Um, and that's why you'll that's see very no helpful or customer. probably yeah and there's probably disputes where that's not clear right so that's why you'll see like right here no owner or customer is because you know in the venn diagram there's a lot of overlap but they're not 100 yeah. percent the same that gives us to the appendix which is where i have questions Take one of away. which is this one um I'm always concerned when we refer to rates in a document that we might not update regularly. Um, you know, we vote the rates every year and maybe because they haven't been part of the regulations, the vote has just been the new water rates for FY23 will be X, right? That's what we vote. We either, I think, have to change the vote um, or be concerned with, since the regulations say the rate is what the appendix says, I think we either need new language when we vote rates, but then I'm concerned that even if we have that language, if it doesn't actually make it into Appendix A, that we might not be able to charge the rate the council voted until it's changed in Appendix A. And I worry that that might get forgotten sometimes since this is new. So is there a way we can, this is just language I sort of came up with, um, a way to ensure that the council's latest vote is the water rate, even if Appendix A has not yet been changed. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? I think Can, so. You're saying, oh, sorry, go ahead. Oh, I, I, I was going to, ultimately, this is your guys' decision. I'm going to advocate for the town council every year votes and updates all of Appendix A because I, I you know, we also don't want stuff like the meter rental rates as meter prices increase. Like I, I want them on an annual basis to not just look at meter rates, but to review any other cost um, or fee and make sure that we're that those aren't static. You know, some some of these things have been static for you know 30, 40, 50 years, and they shouldn't be. Um, and so I want, as we're looking at rates, I actually would, I'm gonna advocate for let's look at the whole picture and let's but I do understand that that's asking town council to look at it differently and not just approve water rates, but to approve, you know, all of the associated fees. So this would be friend. also 
I think this is Mandy, why I just made a note as I'm looking at <laughs> the bylaw, um, you know, the bylaw would let, does say, you know, from time to time, the town count, the, the town manager in, con in consultation with superintendent of public works may propose to the town council adoption or amendment of regulations, which because these are part of the regulations could include fees. And so I wonder if I add a section in the bylaw that says on an annual basis, the town council shall um, review and uh, update as needed a pen rate and fee struck schedule. Um, and I, if I include that in the bylaw, it forces us to do it every year. Um, it would mean having a public hearing on it, which I believe we, have, we would do now. Right. And so, hmm. I mean, I can specify that out right in the bylaw. Yeah. I mean, we don't have to, we could specify an annual review every year. I'm just worried, you know, the way we voted rates in the past, and it could be because we haven't had an appendix or something is just the rate shall be X and mm -hmm. then the council's vote stands. But if the regs say the rate is as per the appendix, if it never gets changed in the appendix, it doesn't matter what the council voted. But we have the ability, we would have, this would change it so that we have yeah. to change it in the appendix. Right. I'm sorry, I didn't mean to talk over Guilford. Yeah. We're really we're really pushing for the fact that when the rates are voted, you actually are voting on Appendix A of the water regulations and the sewer regulations. And you would actually have the whole appendix when you vote. That's what we're really hoping for. So it, don't, it won't get lost because you won't be able to vote without the appendix. So we really, we really kind of set it up this way to make sure it gets voted every year that way. Okay, that helps me. Yeah. So I, I can add in something in the bylaw, though, that does say the council shall conduct an annual um, hearing on and vote or, or conduct an annual vote on Appendix A of review. the regulations. Annual review. Thank you. Of the rate and fee schedule. Yeah. Um, I think we just need to make sure Athena um, realizes the next time we vote rates, the motion will look a little different. Mm -hmm. Well, and to Mandy Joe's kind of point or comment there, do we want to just make sure somewhere on Appendix A that we're capturing like the effective date or something like that? Just because uh, two years from now, there may be mm -hmm. a couple of different versions that somebody printed off at some point, think it's still right. applicable. So just making sure that somewhere it. And I see Athena's yeah. hands up. So maybe Athena will add to this. Hi, so um, I believe Finance Committee recommends changes to the water rates and the council rules state that recommendations from committees should include the motion to be adopted by the town council. So Finance Committee would need to recommend um, changes to Appendix A along with any other changes. I mean, Appendix A, the rates and any other changes to the, um, the fees or anything like that. So that should all be part of the Finance okay. Committee's recommendation and and uh, the motion that they pass on to the council. Most committees don't do that. <laughs> I think CRC is the only one that does that consistent, consistently, but that's what the rules say should happen. Thanks. So I'm just going to put it back on you all. <laughs> <laughs> I do think, I mean, I think it makes, so, so are you saying, just to make sure I'm fully understanding though, is there a reason why we can't put a rate and fee schedule if voted and then blank? So there would or, be an or, effective date here. It would say adopted X amended Y. And every time the appendix okay. is amended, the whole regulations are getting amended basically. Right. So, but do we need something that, that makes sure people are aware that it's the most current version that they're looking at? Do you see what I'm saying? Like if we're voting this every year and there's nothing that tells people that in the regulations, cause that's in the bylaw, are they gonna be able to know that they're looking at the most like that they're looking at the accurate yeah. version versus if they just pull an old one and think, well, it's probably still the same. I guess I'm thinking the the footer here will say that. Okay. We'll have an effect, you know, we'll have the like the last amended date on it. Yeah, I guess it, there's just no end date, right? So like, that's all. That's, I just want to make sure people aren't like yeah. accidentally pulling an old one. And is it true that all rate and fee schedules for are like embedded into the regulation document that they don't have their own separate? It's the direction document. that this is going um, and will be true for sewer as well. I did not go through and look at other ones. Um, okay. Yeah. 
Because I, I see your point, Anna, that you don't, I, I mean, being that it's embedded in this document and being that then the whole thing is going to be getting voted on on an annual basis is what it sounds like, as opposed to the regulations are what they are. And then the fee schedule is being triggered. Well, be I mean, I think that we can, I think it depends on what we write in the bylaw. Like if we write in the bylaw that the council shall review appendix A of the regulations right. specifically, then we don't need to go through every single bit of it. Um, that would be really, I think, clarifying too, to sort of pull out that this, this appendix A needs to be voted on on an annual basis. Um, however, I don't know if it solves the issue or I, I'm not sure how that plays into what Mandy was saying about the footnote and how that would change so what amy was saying was to have like i think an effective date uh, or have or or even just like a vote it sounds like you guys right. should have a date that it was voted on and the date that it's effective because typically you vote you know january or february or sometime in the the winter for in effect july 1 of that upcoming year right mm -hmm. i don't know where you would capture that in appendix a if it's different than the effective date of all the rest of the regs. Mm -hmm. So, well, so I, if we go, oh, sorry, go ahead. Go ahead. Sorry. I imagine when we submit our recommendation, it's going to have effective date up there under appendix a, um, <clears throat> you don't have one there now because we don't have one. We're going to make this effective. So mm -hmm. I, I believe our recommendation would have that effective date on it. And I don't think it, I mean, once it's done and what, we, we do this every year. We have to, if we don't do it, we don't have yeah. enough money. Um, right. So no, that makes it's sense. pretty much guaranteed. That's really similar to what I was going to suggest, which was just a line after rate and fee schedule effective as of. So I think effective date is, yeah, that's perfect. Great. So I had two other questions related to this, which is this comment over here. Um, mm -hmm is I, I went through to see what fees were mentioned in the regulations and whether I could find them here. And I didn't see the water connection permit fee or the application fees that were mentioned. Did I miss them somewhere? I think we're just using a different term so we can change that because that's the water system entrance fee is what we're calling it here. Um, so that's a and good so, call. Yeah, so we should... Um, and, and it's as stipulated in the permit because there's a whole formula. We can't just say, here's what it is because it depends on how much water you need, what the size of the service is and stuff like that. So that's that's specific to the water permit. Is it a separate application fee than a connection fee or are they the same? No, there's two. There's a connection fee and an application fee. And they're, they're basically on the same permit. They're on the connection permit. We could we could put it in here. It's just going to add another half page of information or, or page of information. Would something like that work? If there's yeah, and you might want to. I wonder if you want to change that language for the. Again, it's stipulated in the application. <laughs> It'll fix itself when you don't show the track changes. I have a quick question. Is that the fee to connect and then the fee to turn the water on? It's when basically yes. Mm -hmm. All right. And this one says by permit, this this temporary hydrant use fee. Is it a permit then that you get for that? It is. Okay. I mean, you could, it's, if you want to be consistent with language, you can say on the applicant, like there's, there's the application that you complete to get the permit. And so if you want to be consistent with language, that's, that's appropriate. Are, are you, so you can say on the application. Yeah, just right. Okay.
You're really only 27 pages. Yeah. <laughs> I think it'll show 27 now. Yeah. What were all the rest of the, like, it looks like there's a lot to still scroll down, Mandy. There could not. just be track change issues that are not fixed yet. Solved. Okay. I'll make sure there's no blank pages when I do that, do the formatting. Yeah. I, I think, I think it'll disappear. Yeah. I don't know what this line's for. <laughs> It might just be to show the end of the fee struck page. I will delete it. <laughs> yeah, I think at some point I was like, "What's the fee going to be?" And I left this, but it it looks like it kind of got pushed down. Like I left a fill in the blank here. Yeah. So. Awesome. Um, so, any other? questions or comments or we we are going to make a motion and this is the really fun part because <laughs> we need to account for Anna making changes to this after um and, and me yes and Mandy, so, to it too. Mandy do you want to excuse me it's my dog um if do you want to attempt a motion here um, give me a second to draft sure. a new one. Sure. I'm just going to step away for one second. Are we going to recommend a specific adoption effective date or not? Well, it still has to go. Well, in, in terms of to, to be concurrent with bylaw adoption and all. Yes, oh, it, I think should. that's what that was the consensus on that right yeah but okay yeah. okay so let's it's try to be a sewer regulation um and a sewer bylaw as well okay correct let, let me try this and i can send this to you athena but i'll read it slow um to declare the well, I, I guess I move to declare the water use regulations clear, consistent, and actionable, permitting subsequent formatting changes as discussed at the 928-22 meeting, and recommend that the council's adoption have an effective date to coincide with any required rate increases or bylaw adoption. <clears throat> Second. Great. Any further discussion? All right, so um, Anika, I'll start with you for the vote. Yes. Mandy? Aye. I'm an aye, and Jennifer? Aye. Great, congratulations. <laughs> <Yay>. <laughs> and you still have a lot of work to do, sorry. <laughs> we did our <laughs> best. You did great, you did great. I will send this to you, Anna, after Thank I've you. done the, the defined capitalizations. Oh. Thank you so much. All right. Thank you, Guilford and Amy for joining us. That was really fun. Yeah, <laughs> um, <thank you. laughs> Unless you and, stay for the rest. <laughs> yeah, feel free to stay um, in the audience if you'd like. Um, <clears throat> Anna, do you want to stick thank around you. for just a second on the rubric piece or, or the rubric I'd piece? love to. I um can I just run and use you can start talking, but I have to pee yeah. so bad. Yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. Actually, we okay. have um, two sets of minutes to adopt. So why Perfect. don't we go ahead and do that? Okay, I'll be right back. We do not have any attendees. So we're good right now in terms of public comment. Um, so 
we have, let's see here. Um, the, I have to pull up Athena. Do you, because they didn't make it into the SharePoint, um, the change on the minutes. It's what was, were the ones that we were the older ones we were adopting August 17. Perfect. Okay. So I'm going to move to adopt the August 17th, 2022 minutes and the, the August 17th and the September 14th, uh, minutes. I'll second. Okay, great. Any discussion? Okay. Um, so Jennifer. Hi. Anika. Yes. Mandy. Hi. And I'm an I. Okay. Thank you, Athena. And thanks for getting those. I know you had to do that off of a video, I think. <laughs> that must be grueling to have to go through and watch. I so prefer to do them in real time. It's yes. Okay. <laughs> Absolutely. Okay. All right. So the next um matter of business is for us to discuss this three-part um, appointment uh, referral to us. The first being review of section two, eight, and nine on the town council policy on making recommendations for town council appointments. Second is review of a scoring matrix. And the third is review of public record status of uh, CAFs, which are um, community activity. What? How do we, Mandy? What is CAF again? <laughs> community activity forms. Forms. Okay, good. Um, so I guess I probably would have made. I, I don't know what you think about this, Mandy, but I may have done this a little differently in terms of how the agenda is written. We're not reviewing a scoring matrix as much as we are discussing the possibility of one. Is that true? Yeah. Okay. Um, so, and the reason I've asked Anna to stay is because I remembered that, uh, they had had some, um, thoughts about this previously. And so if we want, and I, and think in particular the matrix, so maybe we can just start there. So Anna doesn't have to stay for the whole discussion and, um, or unless, unless you want to, I don't uh, mind. I love you. Well, <laughs> yeah. Um, but <laughs> Please, if you, um, I, and I know Mandy, this was your, these were your recommendations, I think, and, or were at least gone through in CRC. And so having, do you want to provide us first with like a background overall? Yeah, I, I can provide a background. So as CRC was running into this problem last spring, right. Um, as it related to, um, appointments and looking at trying to fill the remaining vacancies at the ZBA. Um, and given our last thing, we were looking at potential changes to the policy that the council adopted um, that that CRC, at least for the next set of appointments, thought would be useful and then said, you know, maybe the council needs to look at these. And so those got referred. But while we were doing that, um, you know, in my four years on the council dealing with appointments for three of them or recommending appointments for three of them, Anna, before she was on the council, came to GOL a couple of times and, and um, spoke highly of some sort of rubric or scoring matrix or um, in order to potentially um, decrease the, the bias, unintentional bias, but bias that can go into making recommendations. Um, and GOL had never gotten to it, but I brought it up in CRC as we were thinking about what do we recommend could be helpful to CRC in, in making these recommendations that we're sending to GOL. And so that's why it got voted on. It was not a unanimous vote to send to the council to see if they would refer this to GOL. In the end, it did get referred to GOL. I didn't have beyond that memory of Anna mentioning it multiple times in GOL. You're being very term. kind about how I showed up with this. Um, <laughs> you know, I, I did not research it. I did not look into it. I did not look at any potential examples um, because it was more of a, maybe it's time for GOL to look into this and, and get it formally looked into. So there isn't any examples or anything, but um, it, it was based sort of on those two experiences from my point of view. And then CRC made that 
recommendation, like I said, was not unanimous to the council and the council referred it here again, not unanimous. But I think the initial referral is to determine whether it would be appropriate. And then if GOL makes the recommendation that it would be useful, then for GOL to recommend what it would look like. Um, Okay, so I'm, I see Jennifer's hands up. I'm also going to go to Anna, but just to quickly clarify. So we first are tasked with deter determining whether there should be one. And then if we make that recommendation, does it have to go back to the council first before we would propose something or could we develop it and then... We'd have to look at the exact referral, but I think the referral said, if we think it's worth recommending, develop it to recommend to the council before you go back to the council for a new referral. Perfect, um, perfect. Okay, okay, Jennifer, please. Um, yeah, so I'm sorry, I just wanna create, so it was, we would develop one and bring it to the council? Only if we thought it was worth doing. Like oh, okay. only if we were gonna recommend the council yeah. adopt one. Right, and so I think what was, the discussion, the council, I think it really, and I include myself in this, I don't really know what it is. So I think yeah. people just have, they reacted to it, not knowing what it could be. So that would be really helpful to know. I agree. And just to sort of follow up on that point that Jennifer's making, you said that it didn't get voted unanimously um, at CRC. What was the, was there any, anything you could shed light on? My yeah. guess is it's very similar to the the conversation at the council. Um, Jennifer can probably confirm that it was right. It People was just didn't like, yeah. Right. <laughs> um, it's what you associate a matrix with, but so that's why I think it'd be really helpful to hear from Anna. Like, really, perfect. How is it? What is it? Yeah, we don't really. We're just. Yeah. Okay. Patiently waiting, Anna. <laughs> What you know, it no, it's fine. Uh, Mandy, I'm, I I can't believe you remembered me constantly showing up at GOL and, and uh, George being like, we have been working on this for six months and you're coming in now. Um, but I'm really glad that it's getting brought back up again. And 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 that's not any fault on, on George. Um, so essentially what what a what a rubric does is when we think about, so I'm, I'm approaching this a little bit from my professional world when we think about hiring and reducing bias and promoting equity in, in hiring decisions, right? Because essentially what we do when we are appointing is we are hiring someone, just they don't get paid. Um, and so we are appointing someone to a role similar to hiring someone into a role. And when we make those decisions, when we make appointment decisions to match the specific skills that we're looking for uh, in the role, right? In the job, in the appointment, in, in whatever it is, we're reducing the potential for bias versus if we look at the people and then decide if they fit whatever conceptualization of the role we have in our heads. So I also wanna just kind of name something, which is that this is a political, role, right? And so there are politics that are going to come into play. And I'm not saying that we can get rid of whatever personal uh, things we may want to see. However, we can't root those personal things in, in bias. Um, and so what this is doing is allowing us sort of as a first step to mitigate um, how we're looking at, at folks' skills um, and kind of take that, take that bias away um, as much as possible. So what a rubric does it, or what, how it kind of functions is that you create a set of standard quote unquote measures, right? Standard attributes or skills or traits or knowledge or ability that um, map to the role and map to kind of where, what the role needs to do. Um, this is quite literally often presented as a template. Um, I've seen them done as, as like Excel sheets. And so you create that sort of scoring standard. Um, it needs to be the same for everyone, right? It could be one to four, could be yes, no, strong, yes, strong, no, whatever, however you decide, but everyone is using the same um, matrix. And the idea here is that if you want to appoint fairly, you need to decide on what you're hoping to evaluate before you design the evaluations. So this is where, you know, GOL would come together and say, what is it that matters most in different appointments? And then there's a lot of decision points for y'all, right? Is this a matrix that needs to be relevant regardless of committee? Is this a, you know, do you create different ones for the, just the ones the council appoints, et cetera, et cetera. There's lots of questions for you, but you can, you can adjust that rubric to make sure it's specific to the role. Um, however, having general areas would be helpful. So um, 
in terms of best, so just to be very clear, this is considered best practice in hiring. Um, so this is absolutely what um, folks should be doing when they're hiring for jobs. And I, in my opinion, feel like it should be translated over. So you create your, your screening criteria um, and, and GOL would create and pitch that. And um, some things might be, you know, related work experience um, or, or translatable work experience, I think in this instance. Uh, education. Some people talk about, you know, service in the community, other service that they've done, other past experience, um, training or professional development, uh, experience working with diverse populations. There are lots of different ways, but you all would have to decide on a set of maybe, you know, six to eight kind of like areas that you think are most important. Um, you or whoever is, I guess it would be you all. I'm, I'm, appointments are blanking in my head, it would be you all, um, would, would clarify this prior to um, screening candidates and you could decide, um, my recommendation would be, would be to use this in your screening process and your interview process. Um, and that way you're also coming to the conversation with a shared language. When you talk about candidates, uh, you're talking about their, their skills and their um, qualifications, their skills and their qualifications and what they bring to the table using a shared benchmark. Again, other things can come in that can impact your vote. I'm not taking away your right to, you know, I'm not suggesting that you use that, but it gives you at least a common baseline. Okay, and just to be clear, GOL um, appoints for the non-voting member finance. in finance. Yeah, yeah, that's what I was remembering. Oh, yeah, And then CRC appoints for the um, zoning. Um, right, yes. And yeah. planning. And planning. Thank you. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Um, Okay, thank you, Anna. That was really, really helpful. Um, Jennifer. Yes, thank you. That was very helpful. Um, and maybe we start with, I don't know, the council, the committees we appoint versus giving one to Paul, but we can, that's another discussion. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But no, my, um, and again, this may be getting a little in the weeds because <clears throat> we're really just talking about the concept of using like a rubric. But mm -hmm. um, I think since we're, for our committees, we're, or Paul's too, you know, we're looking for volunteers from the community, is how we deal with, um, you know, if you're hiring for a professional position, you really are looking for specific experience. I mean, I fear that one reason Sometimes. we've been, yeah, well, challenged to get more like applications or CAFs for ZBA mm -hmm. is, it is intimidating when you read the experience. I think people feel like if they really aren't planners, or land use specialists yeah. that they can't, but we want to, you know, we want to have people from our community involved. So, yeah. So my other recommendation, if you want to just let me talk about all the things I want to see, um, my other recommendation would be for folks who are on CRC and GOL who make these decisions to go through an anti-bias workshop around hiring um, before, before doing these appointments, because there are um, ways to look at experience that aren't just direct related, like perfect match, right? So for example, I'll use myself as an example. I was on the conservation commission. I, I have an undergraduate degree in environmental science, but I haven't touched it in, you know, since that many years ago. Um, and so for me, my qualified experience is that I spent nearly every day out on those trails, right? And like, that was relevant for folks. I was very familiar with it. I saw how it changed. I saw how it adapted. And so that would be considered relevant experience. So I think that what's important for you all is to define those categories. Cause I agree, Jennifer, that this is those boards, especially the ones you referenced are really intimidating. And there's no reason why a non-professional planner could do a great job on them. So it's, it's important that you all are creating whatever matrix you end up using, that you're creating it and that you have a shared understanding and definition. And that would be a discussion to have amongst yourselves is, are we okay with somebody who isn't a professional planner? My argument would be that, yes, you, you, I'd love to see that. Um, and when you think about unbiased and reducing bias and hiring, that's something that they talk about a lot is it's someone's job doesn't necessarily mean that they'll do that role well. Um, and so it's important for you to consider what are the, the things that you're looking for. Um, and if they're not a professional planner and they're a teacher, what skills are they taking from teaching that then they would apply? And you can ask that question. Um, yeah. Okay. Thank you, Anna. And I saw first Mandy's hand and then Anika's I'd, hand. I'd love to hear Anika first. Anika. Oh, 
So yes, uh, thank you, Anna. I just wanted to just add a couple of thoughts. Um, I think that it's great to look at at this um, through the lens of of um, ha ha coming from a, a position of hiring. Though I also think that it's important as well to recognize that we are in fact talking about volunteers because mm -hmm. there is quite, you know, um, and but I I completely understand like the, the parallel and the expectation uh, as well as um, I'm sorry my thought is going right out of my head I may need to if if Mandy you will go ahead and just give me a moment to just remember my train of thought just run out of my head and I'll go after thank you sure um so you know in doing this for the council for three years both on GOL and CRC um mm -hmm. we as committees um every committee basically um <laughs> and every appointment that we've done has struggled with once the interviews are over how to talk about and narrow down the choices um, mm -hmm. and, and make those choices. We have the, the, the policy we have that every other committee has had before the council um, adopted the policy has this like um, sort of preferred qualification section. Like what are we looking for? You know, what, what makes a good candidate? And yet we've never known what to do with that almost once the interviews are done, right? Mm -hmm. We've put it out there for um, writing a statement of interest or mm -hmm. how are we going to, what questions should we ask because this is what we're looking for. But then every, you know, my experience has been that then we get to the talking and we struggle with, well, does this person meet those qualifications or not? Mm -hmm. Or we struggle with how to talk about that. And so I, you know, and, it's not always been clear, and I have been um, complicit in this too, that we as committee members have gone back and actually looked at those standards that we gave everyone else and then made our own thinking about them before we get to the discussions. And so I, I feel like something like this, that if we're tasked with having to fill it out ourselves, mm -hmm. um, or at least, you know, having that in front of us might give us a way to have those conversations or at least structure the conversations. At the right. same time, I do worry, um, how do you, as Anna said, you know, there's been a difference of opinion as what well, is this political appointment or not? Mm -hmm. How do you factor that into this? And then the, we still have problems always recruiting, especially for ZBA. Um, but you know, not as not as severe with finance, not as severe with planning. But ZBA, mm -hmm. for some reason, which is our most quasi judicial body, um, mm -hmm. how how do we make this so that if we do all of this, we don't scare everyone <laughs> away? Yeah. <laughs> so I, in my I'm sorry, are you done? Yeah. Okay. So in my opinion, this shouldn't change anything for the folks who are applying for the roles. Um, nothing about using a, a matrix or, um, a, in, or a rubric should change anything about how they apply for these, um, unless you're going to totally revisit that, but I don't think it needs to. Um, what it does change is, is, and you hit the nail on the head, is it gives you a way to approach your conversation. Um, it doesn't mean, and, and I want to be very clear, this is not a, you average all the scores and pick the highest person. That's not what this is. Um, and so, you know, what it does do is it allows folks to say, okay, Mandy, you rated this person really, really high on, you know, related experience. Um, I rated them really low. Can you walk me through why you had a four and I had a one? And we can have that discussion. Um, it gives you a grounding. It also, you know, there may be times where you say, okay, ZBA has, you know, four professional planners on it right now, we're going to, we're going to choose to prioritize uh, this other area, which is engagement in the community or something like that. Um, and so you can look at it with that sort of that shared lens. When I say it doesn't take away the political end of this, I just, I don't, Part of me is not sure that we should take away the political, right? Like we were elect, part of the reason that we were elected is to make these appointments. And so um, I'm not gonna suggest that we should get rid of all political aims because I also think that there are there are things that we each want for our town and, and our community and, and those might be different and that's okay. Um, but what it does do is it gets rid of the things that should be there for everyone, 
right? So um, it's not going to ask, you know, I'm not going to say that you should put on your matrix uh, interest in building tall buildings. That should not be on your matrix, right? Um, we all have different feelings about that. And so I think that that's something that you can, you can engage in and talk about. But um, for the things that should be commonly shared values or commonly shared attributes or whatever it is, um, that's what should be on the matrix. Does that, I, I feel like I danced around it a little bit. It's not going to solve some of the tough conversations we have to have. We will always have to have those, but it gives a ground, a jumping off point so that what we're getting at is the actual core of, um, we have, we have multiple qualified people. We have done what we can do to reduce bias in our interviewing and in our selection. And now we can also include the, the elements that are, um, that are personally important or politically important to us, uh, regardless of all of the other stuff. So it's, I'm going to go to Jennifer and then Anika, but I think what you're saying is it's a supplemental, it's a tool as, as yes. one of other ways that we might work through that process. Okay. Yes. Jennifer. Um, yeah, no, I was just going to ask maybe at the, another meeting where we discuss this, if you could bring the rubrics you use, mm -hmm. you know, at, at yeah, work, absolutely. I can do that. Yeah. yeah. And then the and other thing, yeah. this is getting a little in the weeds, but just like, you know, for, for what we do, it's, and this doesn't really, it, it's helpful to have, I think people from one of the criteria might be people representing different parts of Amherst. Mm -hmm. So that's, you know, a different kind of a qualification. Right. So one of the boxes may be, you know, considering the current makeup, uh, this individual brings a different um, but so what I would say, though, is I wouldn't, I, I would say demographic, I would not say perspective. No, um, I was going to say geographic. Yeah. Exactly. Yes. So, so I think that that, because those are two super different things. So um, yes, absolutely. It could be that, right? Like your board is entirely South Amherst folks. So you got to pull someone from D1 or D2 um, or, or like you would want to prioritize, potentially prioritize that. And again, I'm not saying which elements of your matrix should be prioritized, but that would be part of your discussion as well. And are you, just to clarify that point, are you saying that perspective should not be included in a matrix? I think that's something that GOL could talk about, but that is such a, um, excuse me, subjective. Sorry, I'm having some asthma stuff <laughs> this past week. <clears throat> that's such a subjective area that like, I don't think you can really get into it. Um, yeah, it does. I, I do wonder though, how we might be able to take get that elephant out of the room in a way and, and, and talk about it, not in a way that's, you know, that, that actually is a way of, um, injecting like life into the process. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? That like, it's that we can talk about these things <laughs> and that we're, you yeah. know, I think what it allows you to do is remove it from someone's qualifications or experience. Um, in a way that I think might be helpful. So if you are looking at perspective, you're not entangling it with, they believe no. this thing, but look, they're so professional at whatever job it is. So you're able to kind of tease it out and just center it in yeah. a way that might be helpful. Yeah. I agree. Yeah, I think so. Um, Anika and then Mandy. Uh, yeah. So just to, uh, to continue with what uh, both you, Michelle and Anna had just said, I think it would also just be helpful that, um, you know, when talking about this, to really just be clear on, uh, you know, definitions of, of what is diversity, because, you know, not everyone feels the same as what that is, and, and recognizing that we have uh, an incredibly, you know, most often an incredibly small pool, um, you know, uh, of applicants coming in, um, you know, but does that mean that you just, you know, fill in wherever? Um, so I, I definitely think that e even just looking at um, makeups, um, also just in terms of like also balance, experience, ideas, you know, and, and interest, because, you know, sometimes it is helpful, you know, as Anna has, has pointed out, I mean, someone may not have, um, you know, the direct experience, but you know it's some you know it's they have they have interest or something that they can bring to the table that could even challenge um, the folks that have had you know a great deal of experience and um, you know there's there's no solution but I think that you know really just trying to expand because you know in just in my experience um, so far being counsel and here at committees and I mean. <sighs> 
the lack of diversity is, is real. And oftentimes um, the definitions and what we're talking about within diversity is also uh, very limited, you know? So I think for us to also um, provide space and open up for folks, like you hear a lot about it's intimidating and it's intimidating. And I'm sure there are people that it's intimidating for, but also, rec you know, in recognizing people that may be used to a, uh, just a wider pool around diversity in terms of expectations and makeup, it's also exhausting. So some people will look and say, you know, I have the expertise. I have the experience. I know someone who is just interested and they could maybe add to this, but, you know, I'm looking at the makeups and I'm not seeing diversity, you know? Um, I know what I'm walking, I feel anyway, I know what I'm walking into. I mean, I, I definitely hear a lot of that. So I know that, um, I, you know, I really like this idea, um, but I think that, you know, real, I think it's really important to kind of look, I think we assume a lot that when people are talking about diversity, that we're all on the same page with, you know, how we see that and what that means. And I think if we the do- matrix would that, allow you, sorry, mm -hmm. I apologize. I didn't mean to cut you off. No, 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 I'm, I'm just- yeah, but I, I, I get like a, a formula, you know, when it's when it's a formula, but I'm just saying in terms of like what we're um, just coming to the table with as well. Yeah, yeah. And actually it's, it's in my mind, it's less so a formula. It's more so a common understanding um, because when you create your, you know, if you create a rubric, you'll have had the discussion of what does it mean to if, if you know, brings a different demographic or, or helps to support more representative um, volunteers on our boards. If you decide on that, everyone needs to be clear on what it means before you can kind of kind of determine where folks are at. So, you know, to your point, then you, you're having the discussion where you're not just looking at one dimension of diversity. Um, you're not just looking at, at one element and you're, you, you're having a conversation where everyone's using the same um, grounding. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Mandy. So a couple of thoughts. Um, some lean me towards this and some are like, ah, and the summer that are, ah, are, this sounds like a whole lot more work than what we've been doing <laughs> <laughs> and a lot more committee time. And, and it's not necessarily the more work that's the problem. It's fitting it into the committee time, right? Not that that wouldn't be a good thing, but as a chair, when I'm already figuring out and running behind and <laughs> trying to fit it all in, I worry about that aspect. But mm -hmm. um, one thing, a couple of things I see that could be very helpful. I think it might, you know, CRC started thinking about when we've heard a lot of geographic diversity that we need people, you know, our ZBA is too full of people from downtown, you know, or the planning board's only downtown or you know, we need people from all over. Um, we, we've heard comments like that and we hear those comments, but we don't actually always look at the current makeup of the body um, and the membership of the body and where they live before mm -hmm. we're like, oh, they'll bring, bring geographic diversity, right? Um, and so I feel like some of this, if we had a rubric that said, we'll bring geographic diversity, we'd actually have to define what that means based on who's remaining on the committee, not mm -hmm. based on, oh, well, we need one from each district. We'd have to look, you know? And so some of that, you know, the age diversity and all of that, we'd actually have to do that work ahead of time, mm -hmm. look at it and, and have that conversation that says, you know, who's remaining on? Where do they live? What are their ages? What are their genders? What are this? So what does diversity look like in the new candidates, um, you know, yeah. and so, but uh, two other things. So I also think it might be helpful if you've done that first and you distribute that rubric, hey, candidates, this is what we're gonna be filling out. That mm -hmm. might actually help them with the SOI. You know, we've, mm -hmm. we've had questions that say, give us your relevant experience, but if they don't know what we think is relevant, you know, we've had candidates apply for planning board that have served on ZBA and not mentioned it at all in an interview or an mm -hmm. SOI. Um, and we're like, right. how that's totally relevant, right? Mm -hmm. um, but maybe they didn't think it was. Um, and so that might help them know what we're looking for. My one other big concern is in terms of would this 
put people out from applying is if we fill, if each of the CRC members or each of the GOL members fills this out, are those now public records? And I think we need an attorney opinion on that. Um, yeah. you know, if we're actually, if I'm taking that rubric yeah. and I as Mandy CRC appointing committee person, you know, on the recommending committee, putting numbers down for each so, candidate, mm. do, do those evaluations become public records or not? Because if they do, I worry that that might scare people away from applying. Yeah. The way I would think about it is uh, I am assuming that when you interview people, you have the questions printed out and some of you take notes. Um, those notes are not public. So I think that, it, I guess it depends on how you present it. Saying that we are we are using a rubric might mean that you have it in front of you. If you happen to write stuff in it, that's fine. Um, what's What gets challenging is that the best practice is to use the same scale. So, um, you know, I guess as long as you've got that, I'm, I'm picturing the doc, like a document in my head, right? And it says, you know, this is the rubric, consider it on a one to four scale. Um, I, my, my, my like waiting for Athena to, to call me out on this is that like, I, I don't, I think it seems like personal notes. I think that it gives you a grounding for the conversation. Um, I don't think that you need to say it was a four, it was a one. You could say, I thought this candidate was really strong in this area. Um, but I agree with you that it's not, it wouldn't be helpful to have those be public record to the process. And, and then to the first point that you made, um, and I'm sorry, I, I don't, I feel like I've become the de facto like team rubric uh, person. And so I, I wanna just disclaimer this, I'm speaking from my own experience, like this is hugely Googleable and all of that too. I encourage you to, to check it out. What is not hugely Googleable, which makes me very excited is that we would be kind of leading a little bit of the curve and using this for municipal appointments. Um, and I, I think that it speaks really highly to Amherst's commitment to bringing in an equity lens to our different processes. So I just wanna name that. Um, in terms of the more work, yes, and these role definitions don't necessarily shift all that often. So it would be work on the front end. However, I my again, my imagination is saying that you would revisit the rubric when you revisit the interview questions, but that the rubric itself would be fairly standard year to year because these are common, they should not necessarily be related to current happenings in town. Um, it should be things that are shared across and it should even be you know shared general enough that it should be shared across appointments. Um, relevant experience is relevant experience regardless of, uh, of whether that's finance or, or ZBA. Um, yeah, I don't know if that helps at all, but that would be mine. And I'm happy to take a stab at what a, a draft might be um, and try to think through some of the some of the options. Okay, Jennifer and then Anita. I guess just a couple of things. I mean, like I know, I very much think about who's on the boards now in mm -hmm. appointments, because yeah. So I think that we do, we are very aware of who's there because we're feeling like one or two vacancies and how does it balance with, with the expertise or geographic or any other diversity representation that's on the current board or commission. Um, but we can discuss this. I'm struggling, I'm thinking, I guess I just assumed that the scoring rubric would be public. I don't, you know, that part of, I mean, I think that the way when we discuss a candidate after, I think that's intimidating. I don't, you know, I, I'm wondering if sharing the rubric, you know, saying, well, I thought they scored would be, makes it um, almost more objective. I don't, I mean, we can discuss that. I, I wonder if that wouldn't make people feel more rather than less, com you know, more comfortable rather than less. Um, yeah. Yeah, I mean, we can talk about that because I think, I've always wondered also the people they're interviewed and then you sit there and you listen to everybody. I, that horrifies me. That would I, know. Me. I, don't know. I know it doesn't sound like we can do a ton to change that part of it, but I think Mandy's right that it might be worth getting a quick legal opinion on that, on the um, public nature of, <laughs> excuse me. And of also with the CAFs, we were going to ask, I think even, you know, when people apply for the uh, town manager appointed committee boards and commissions mm -hmm. that, I don't understand why that's not public information, just that you applied. Is it not? 
apparently they I said they come huh. through the time i'm sorry i thought they came through um that we were oh maybe that's just the they come through that's the just the ones yeah. we appoint as counselors. right so you don't that's a um, whole separate that's, that's a different agenda <laughs> item <laughs> um and it is a really interesting and important and it's been on my mind too so and i've actually had people give me feedback that have applied for things and so let's make that its own <laughs> item at some point um and just anika i saw that your hand was raised did it go down um, uh I, I put it down i just had a, a last comment basically just you know thank you Anna. i think in in ways like this is necessary an event um parallel to the you know up, updating uh the water regulations after what is it uh, 50 years you know so i think that <laughs> this <laughs> has some fresh air blowing through it as well so thank you and I'll just add, if I could, um, you know, I do think that this could be a really wonderful tool for us to use. And I do think it's best practices in hiring. Um, it also raises the stakes in ways, um, you know, that when we're talking about volunteers um, and even just the scenario that we just went through here where Jennifer described like, after we've gone and done the interview, then they go, the person goes back into the audience and then we have a discussion, right? And I can imagine that if there is a rubric that, especially if they haven't seen it in advance. So for me, the transparency and for them to be able to see- They have to. That in advance. Yeah, yeah that's yeah. critical. Um, so I guess I'm just trying to understand whether it's, an internal tool for members of the committee to use and have a common language to speak on, or if it's more of an external tool. Um, because I think that depending on what the criteria is, um, there will be a, a higher sense of stakes um, if we're going through point by point like that. Um, and I just wonder how the public and the people who are considering applying for these positions might feel um, about that process. Mm -hmm. Like, it feels a lot more serious <laughs> in a way. It does, but it also lends a, a really concrete sense of consistency across the interviews. Um, yeah, I think yeah. that there's also something to be said for, oh, they talked about this candidate for an hour. They only talked about me for five minutes. You know, like I think because there's not necessarily a set approach and that's not to say they're, I'm not saying they're going to take the exact amount of time, but um, this, at least it gives every single person the same grounding in a way that interview questions don't, right? I, I know you're asking the same questions. However, um, this is much, it takes out some of that, um, uh, some of that bias, right? So when we think about the different types of bias, we've got um, we've got affinity bias. So we people who are similar to us in their beliefs. We have perception bias. So things we believe about other groups based on how they show up. Um, the the halo effect. So I'm, I was looking this up this morning when I was practicing. So I don't just uh, know all of these perfectly. But um, halo effect is like when you say, oh well, you're. It, it would be me saying, oh well, you're from South Amherst, so you must be wonderful because you're from my district, right? Um, and then confirmation bias, which is looking to conform our own pre-existing ideas. All of this shows up not just in political opinion, but it also impacts uh, on lines of gender bias, beauty bias, racial bias, um, uh, ageism all of that comes into play. And so when you bring a rubric in, even if it's, you know, something where you, you frame your rubric as a, we talked about the dimensions of diversity that they bring to the table. Um, this allows us to, to kind of let go of that perception bias and say, okay, maybe they are from South Amherst, but, or let go of all of those types of biases and say, <laughs> okay, you know, I'm making the assumption that because they live downtown, they are really not excited about frozen yogurt. I don't know. Um, and so it allows me to, to check that because we're having this conversation. We're all talking about the same area. Um, and we can kind of without calling people out on their identities and things like that, we're talking about why it matters to us. Um, so I think, yeah, sorry, I went on a little little rant there, so but, but my point is like, it gives that common ground, yeah. Yeah, I, I was just thinking while you were speaking, it totally 
totally makes sense. Everything that you're saying and how um, maybe doing some sort of mock uh, mm -hmm. trial <laughs> as a GOL mm -hmm. committee with a mm -hmm. willing uh, volunteer. <laughs> you can do me just um, like, yeah. yeah. That's a great idea. I think that might really help us to have the experience of it. So it's that great we idea. work out what the issues are. We yeah. could potentially do all of us. That's a good idea. It's a great idea. <laughs> That's scary. <laughs> that is scary. Not, not even one of our committees. Just say, you know, random X committee <clears throat> that we don't even appoint. Like, and right. And yeah. right do example. like something like Conservation Commission would yeah. be perfect, honestly. That would be great. Because yeah. like, that's one where people do value lived and uh, professional experience. So, anyway. Okay. I like, I feel like I feel, would feel more confident if it, on the next time we discuss this, we tried to do a mock something or other to feel the process a little bit more, um, to see where the red flags might be and where the areas that we could tailor specifically for municipal government. Cause I just, I want to call out what Anna just said about, um, sort of leading the way in something in terms of municipal government. And, you know, I think, these things do get picked up and people do are watching. And so I think that um, it, it's important to, to, to really uh, be mindful of that and, and also to appreciate that opportunity. Mm -hmm. Maybe. Yeah, I think before we try ourselves out at one, I'd like to see some drafts from Anna and then maybe yeah. once we see those drafts take, you know, maybe in the next committee meeting or whenever we get to this next, um, put in the selection criteria that we've adopted for FinCom, for um, planning board, for ZBA. We've, we've got all of that's public, right? And see if we could tailor those selection criterias or take all of them and cover most of that within one rubric, come up with what a rubric might look like, um, yeah. what the questions might be, what the, you know, under diversity say brings diversity or whatever, what what the specific things under diversity might be instead of just brings diversity, right? We've talked about that one of people have different views as to what that is. Um, look at a rubric, see if we can come up with it, see if we can come up with sort of an inclusive examples of relevant experience, right? Because I think Anna's example of, for ConCom, walking the trails, walking the town might not have that, you know, we could potentially put some of that into a rubric for a applicant to see instead of just relevant experience without explaining what it is. And then once we've got that done after one or two meetings, then try and see if we could fill out SOIs ourselves for random committee and then see how that conversation would go or what, what we run into as we're trying to apply to a committee using the rubric almost. Perfect. So I can I just sounds like a great process? And I think um, we can really make this a big town event where lots of people come to the to the mock <laughs> trial of this. <laughs> um, I'm just joking about that. Um, okay, Anna, you were about to say something and then Jennifer has her hand up. Um, I just know that typically GOL meetings are a little tough for me. So I just will need to play calendars at some point. Um, uh, and I want to make sure I get you guys something good. So um, get y'all something good. So if, if we can just play calendars later, Michelle, that'd be awesome. Yeah. And I just want to make sure that, um, we are clear about what you're doing so that, you know, you're, you, there's already a lot on all of our plates. And so I think what I heard Mandy suggest is that you would provide some templates of a matrix, maybe from your experience or something that you'll pull, and then you'll provide mm -hmm. that to us. Will that be in your mind and in Mandy's mind who, you know, with or without criteria? I like, is it coming as a structure and then we're going to do the criteria here? Mandy, how are you envisioning? So I'd that? like to just see some that have been used in actual hiring, you know, that, yeah. that aren't already tailored to say Amherst and what we'd be doing. Just yeah. like, what yeah. do people do? Get me a, you know, see some yeah. rating systems, some questions, some, some of that. Um, Great. And then we can also put in the packet the three sets of se selection criteria that are most recent for the three committees that um, the town council makes, you know, makes appointments for. 
um, because that could then inform the samples. Once we've found one we kind of like um, system wise, inform yeah. what goes into it that might be able to cover all three appointments. Because I think yeah. part of the goal is to make it as wide covering as possible. Yeah, yeah, definitely. So just to reiterate, just to say it back to make sure. So I've got in my notes, I have pull a few examples of hiring rubrics used um, for GOL to look at, but you, do you want me to just toss some ideas out for what a sample might look like for y'all or no? Yes. Okay. Cause yes. that's, that's you fine. Have okay. The, yeah. the time to do that. And in the beginning you had mentioned, like I wrote down related, relevant experience, translatable mm -hmm. education, train those, if you could sort of give us those framework, that framework that you mm -hmm. outlined, mm -hmm. part, that would be really helpful. And Thanks. we just, and, and we can follow up on this again, but we, our next meeting is on the 12th. So you can let me know if that's be there. Okay. I know I can't be there. That's why I was like, Ooh, um, Do you think you can get us something before the 12th? Um, I can or, definitely yeah. try. Okay. Okay. So, cause we still have two other items on this, in this appointment referral to discuss. So if you can, wonderful, it will be included on the agenda for the 12th. If you can't, then the next meeting would be the 26th of October. And to confirm for the meeting on the 12th, I'd have to have it to Athena by the 7th. Um, Athena. I think that's right. That, okay. that would be her preference. I think that, that oh, it, it's after about... 11. Oh, is Miss Athena still here? Hi. I think that rule about um, getting materials in that time frame applies to the council, but not necessarily committees. I mean, yeah, but I want to be nice. Okay. Um, so Michelle, it's, it's really up to the committee to, you know, make sure they have things in time to review before the committee meeting starts. So, you know, right before yeah. the meeting, they, they won't have time to look it over. Um, thank you. you Michelle, should... I'm going to, I'm going to try and then I'll let you know if I don't think I can meet that deadline. That's perfect. And even like if we had it by the 10th or something, you know, mm -hmm. I think that would probably be plenty of time. Okay. Um, okay. So it is past 11. I'm just checking if there's anyone in the audience again, there is not. Um, and do you all have a second just to review the future agenda? I just want to make sure for next time um, to make sure that, so of the items on the appointments referral, we've started the discussion of C, which was on the agenda review of scoring matrix. We still have B, which was review of section two, eight, and nine on the town council policy on making recommendations for town council appointments, and D, review of public record status of CAFs. Mandy, do you have any uh, recommendations or suggestions, or should we just add those to the agenda for next time and continue on? Michelle, I'm going to split. Sorry. Okay. Bye, Thank everybody. You Bye, Thank everyone. you very much. Thank you. Thanks. So I think they can be added to the agenda. Um, I will not be here next time, or at least I don't expect to be here next time. So um, I would request that maybe the CAF public document be held if possible till I can be part of that conversation. I'm not as concerned with sections two, eight, or nine um, per se. Um, but I expect, hopefully, CRC will be sending you flood maps okay um, well I'll know tomorrow evening <laughs> okay. and I think Jennifer is also with maybe we'll be done by then yeah <laughs> we let's hope <laughs> let's and hope so we can finish it tomorrow and so that I don't know whether that'll take a lot or a little time but but as a CRC chair I would ask that C, uh, GOL get done with that as soon as it can because it okay. actually has a true deadline right. um yeah and yeah. and so you, um, Jennifer, if Mandy's not here on the twelfth and the flood maps are ready, you'll be able to help us through whatever because yeah. I'm not familiar with that. It, okay. It's a clarity. It's going to be pretty straightforward. Right? So I think it's been seen so much that it's going to yeah. actually go fairly quick. I am so not a floodplain expert, but I can do. It. Be okay. <laughs> All right. Were there any other um, future agenda items? We're still waiting on some things that were referred to us to go through other committees. It sounds like we, it looks like the bylaw um, for the water is going to be, I think, Anika, what did you all decide at your next meeting, right? Is that yeah. the eighth? Okay. The sixth. The sixth. Okay. So that could potentially then be reviewed on the 12th here if you guys get through that on the 6th. Is that? I think that's the plan. 
Okay. All right. I just have to say, GOL that is going to be a much more interesting. I'm sorry. No, no, no. Go ahead. Go ahead. No, I was just saying, GOL is proving to be a much more interesting committee than I ever expected. <laughs> I never dreamed of. <laughs> no, I mean, it is. Are there, we're going to be in October. So, are there other um, proclamations that we should be looking out for for the agenda? I checked um, Did last. Do one for Indigenous Peoples Day. Right, Anika, you, I, because I remember we briefly. Although touched that's the tenth. It's soon. Yeah. Hang on. Um, Lynn asked me to reach out to Jen Moiston about that one because I, yeah, exactly. I don't know if we had one last year, and I um to see if the HRC wanted to sponsor something, but. Well, she did they, not. They weren't. Time. They weren't on the list, Christina. That's why they were. Um, we had added them because we didn't see um, a proclamation for um, indigenous. We didn't see one for. There was not one for um, indigenous. Uh, the month or the day. I mean, if it's the day, GOL's review on the twelfth is too late, right? But but somebody needs to make one. Yeah. <laughs> okay. That's the so there's not yeah okay to, to to create it and sponsor it because we, and we do don't we have, have one from previous years no 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 I'm That's looking we had added on the list um I did uh speak with Jennifer about this I had been um talking with a a representative from the um uh, from the Nipmuc tribe um, however I had seen this coming up so I wasn't sure if. There, there was another one sent in. I guess that's how I took that. And it looks like Anika, from here, you'd be looking at doing one for all of November, not for the October 10th Indigenous Peoples Day. What? Am I reading this Excel sheet right with the Native American Heritage Month? That that's more I, of what yeah, you're Yeah, I think that we had, did, didn't we add both for the month and the day, for Indigenous Peoples Day and the month? Because there are two different. I, I didn't October see and November. Yeah. I think that was discussed, Anika. And I remember Jennifer bringing that up. And I remember you talking. I just, I, I didn't make it to this calendar here. Yeah. Um, so, that was in our first meeting. That was during our first meeting. Yeah. So yeah. what would you prefer um, in terms of, or what would the, you know, what do people prefer? Do we want to have two separate? Because at this point we would need to get, at least the one for the 10th done um, pretty, I, I wouldn't even get back to GEO. I think it would have to go to the council today or tomorrow for oh. the thirds meeting. Third if meeting. we were doing indigenous peoples, to, if we wanted it passed before the day, <laughs> which is always ideal, right? Um, yeah. Um, and alternatively, we could acknowledge it at the council meeting, like Anika could acknowledge it as Shalini acknowledged uh, the, the uh, remember the- um, India, Pakistan. Exactly. And and so maybe if Anika was willing to do that, then then we can work on something for November. I don't know if that seems more reasonable in terms of trying to put a whole proclamation together in a day. <laughs> And I think more than more than uh, like putting it together, I, I think for me, I was really, you know, my point was really to hold space to, um, you know, to collaborate with tribal leaders and, and elders to, to bring that forward. So I think to kind of rush to to get something and, you know, uh, you know, just uh, my apologies for that dropping that ball. Um, and and again, I did like when I saw it come through, I thought, oh, well, you know, there's one coming up for review, um, but nevertheless, um, we could have, you know, still have an acknowledgement and then perhaps work together with, I'm not sure if there's anyone else interested to have something that is, you know, thoughtful um, for November. Perfect, perfect, okay. Um, that sounds really good, all right. And I'll, we can talk with Lynn about that direction too, just to give her heads up on that. And all right, anything else? Any other comments or, all right. So then I am going to adjourn the meeting at 11.10 a.m. And thank you, good meeting. Thank you, good meeting, <laughs> thanks. Thank you. <laughs>
Hey, Michelle, can you stay on for just a second? Of course. I'm gonna, I'll, I can stop the. Sure, the recording. The recording here.